Thanks for tuning in to our seller interview series. Up today, we've got an affiliate and product business for sale. Created in July 2014, this business makes $23,803 per month in net profit, and the listing number for this site is 40635. Now, we do these interviews to give potential buyers more information about both the seller and the sites they're looking to purchase. We hope these insights are helpful for you in making a buying decision. We got the seller with us today to go through the business and cover everything from niche selection to traffic and monetization. Thanks for coming on, Robin. Thanks for having me. Excited to talk about it. Yeah, for sure, man. Before we dive into the meat of the interview here, and uh, I'd just like to give a quick summary for the listeners out there on YouTube or wherever they happen to be watching about the business. Like I mentioned, the business was built in July 2014, has a monthly revenue of $66,745 with expenses sitting at $42,942 and a net profit of $23,803. And that is over a 12-month average. With the site, that also includes obviously the domain, the content and files, but it also comes with a Facebook account page with 20,000 plus likes, outsourcer if desired, train email support, product inventory, a CRM, third-party vendor transfer, as well as all old prospect and customer data, email lists, and accounts with the autoresponder sequences, as well as the site slash product, original design files, and ad design files. So having that mouthful, Robin, can you tell us a little bit about your <laughs> background in building and running an online business? It sounds like you probably have some pretty good experience, but is this kind of your first one or is this one of many? Uh, no, yeah. So this is one of many. Uh, started off online affiliate stuff, kind of started in the make money online niche and everything. And then after doing that for a while, I kind of got more into being an affiliate for similar sites and you know in the health and fitness niche. And then after a little bit of doing that, I wanted to start making a couple of my own products in, in the same niche. So started you know owning the own sites and everything instead of sending traffic to other people. And so this is third site of that iteration of doing it a couple times and yeah awesome how did you come up with the idea for this one in particular was there anything about it that just kind of sang to you or what was it uh yeah it was really because of the previous sites i had done in the same niche it was really taking the lessons i'd learned from before and kind of taking the best elements of it so i kind of kept changing it as it went along and there was you know i also get a lot of you know ads for the similar sites i'm in the in the niche myself, you know, I'm the perfect target audience. So just through seeing other people's and through doing it a couple times before, just getting it all to come together for the best culmination that it could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that reminds me of a, an old affiliate strategy uh, that I always read on. I think it was a Stack That Money is a private affiliate forum. They're always talking about mm-hmm. finding your competition's ads and then using that as your springboard for inspiration. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> So for someone not familiar with this business model, and maybe they're still kind of new out there in the online business looking for a good investment, could you just describe briefly how this business makes money? Yeah, so there's two main revenue sources with this business. The first one would be its own product. So it's one specific product that it, it sells primarily, and it's mostly sold on a trial basis. So you get the trial of it, and then you have the trial for 30 days. And then if you don't cancel, you're put into the recurring revenue. So put into the rebuild of you know, monthly product being sent out biggest way. And then the second would be the affiliate product. So using the email sequence and using Twilio for text messages and stuff like that, we promote other people's products in the same you know, health and fitness niche to just get more revenue. Now, is, is mainly the emails affiliate links, or are they like solo ads where people also buy advertisement space on the newsletter? Uh, yeah, mainly just the affiliate links there. Haven't sold any solo ads as of yet. Very nice. Uh, how big is the email list? I have to check. I believe it's around 60000 for the prospects and a little over ten or 15000 for customers. I'll have to check the exact numbers, but around that. That's really good. There's some good numbers. So, so with that said, obviously the business is doing very well. Why, why are you selling the business? Why not just keep it and grow it? Yeah, as I said before, I do have you know multiple businesses and everything, and I get I get bored of things I guess easily. <laughs> as soon as uh, something becomes you know I've kind of reached where I think I want to go with it or you know done it for a while, I I'm ready to move on to the next thing. And 
do it. So I'm a very much a serial uh, builder, I guess. I like the, the early stage of businesses as opposed to the continue scaling or the, you know, back end of it. I think that's a common thread with uh, most of us entrepreneurs. We have that shiny object syndrome. <laughs> we're, always, we're always interested in what we can do with our next idea. So what's, sure. the, what's the plan after the sale? Do you have any ideas for the money? Are you going to go travel around with it? Or are you investing in something else? Yeah, so I have a couple other businesses already running. So some of that money will be put into those businesses for sure. But similar to this business, I, I like most of my businesses to be pretty much outsourced as, as much as I can. So we'll be doing a lot of traveling and a lot of other laid back things as not working too hard, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. So what was the trajectory of this business for those first few weeks and months when you were in those beginning stages? Was it pretty fast in terms of customers rolling in or did it take a while to build up to that? Yeah, because I had similar businesses beforehand and because of the affiliate background, the customers definitely were rolling in right away. The revenue wasn't as strong right away because obviously with it being a trial and it having the recurring revenue, the the bulk of it really comes, you know, after 30 days or month one and two. So it did take a little bit of time to you know, actually get the profits rolling in. But customers itself were, were definitely coming in from day one. This might be a tough question to ask without, you know, the statistics looking at it in front of you. You mentioned the rebuild. Do you know what the burn rate is on that? Do people tend to stick around for a long time? Do you know the uh, lifetime value of a single customer? Uh, yeah, to get that act number, I'd have to look. And, you know, CRM has all the reporting, so I have to get the exact number for that. But the the biggest drop off, obviously, is into the trial period. And then after that, we normally get about a 15% decline every you know month over month. But I have to see exactly what to look to see the exact number. And then the lifetime value, it varies if it's which product or, you know, we've done multiple price points of, you know, to test and everything. And also depending if you're talking about the affiliate commissions as well or just, just the product. But healthy for our numbers for ads. <laughs> nice. So you mentioned your affiliate background really helped you with this business. What did you learn from building this business? And perhaps it was something you learned from your previous businesses that you did that just worked, well, that worked really well for the business. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things learned that was really utilizing all all the data and all the the resources that you have, basically. So I mean, other businesses didn't use the, the email sequences as much or didn't use the customers or their phone numbers. So either didn't have another company calling them or didn't have, you know, various things, basically not, not fully monetizing. Everything was definitely um, one of the biggest things learned in, you know, either previous businesses or somewhat wanting to be able to do with the affiliate businesses that was able to do with this. So do you have people calling these leads now as well? Or is that? Yeah, we don't have people calling right now. What we found was that we have an automated text sequence that goes out. It's just two text messages for prospects who don't end up buying. So if they fill out information, but don't actually make the purchase, just one automated message that goes out and asks, you know, are you, you didn't finish your order and then takes them back to the, the checkout page. And then the second one being here's discount on the shipping. And then it goes back to the uh, checkout page. And that really, the reason we used to do calling and we switched over to the text messages because we found the text messages were, uh, much cheaper than having someone actually call and actually converted just as much. So the calls became uh, unnecessary at that point. It was more expensive to do the calls than it actually brought in. Yeah, I, I could totally see in text message being far more effective, especially since you know you could text the link right to them and everything is just click away. No one's hassling on the phone. So I could definitely see that. It's pretty slick. I like that. It's a cool system. What did you have that you've tried with this website that didn't work? Anything that stands out as something that you hoped would work, but just didn't? Yeah, there, we definitely played with the, the exact uh, trial model and price points and things like that. So we tried a, a really low price point just to see how long we could get someone into, you know, sticking around month to month. And that just took so long to get the cash out of the customer. That was, you know, definitely a, a little bit of a failure on that point. And other than that, the, I think the biggest thing would just be failure. in this was not keeping up with inventory as, you know, as steadily as we should have. So there are some dips in traffic because we have to stop ads because we realized we were about to be, you know, out of supply of a product and still had, you know, monthly members staying on. So we needed to have stock for them. So that was probably those two would be the biggest hurdles or mistakes made. 
there's a certain art to managing inventory. I've, I feel for people <laughs> who have to manage it. Uh, so do you have your own warehouses or how, how are you fulfilling that? Uh, yeah, we use a, a third party supplier or you know fulfillment provider and then have a, a manufacturer who just ships the product to them. It's overseas manufacturer or US made or? US made. Very cool. Moving into the traffics and earnings, could you break down just where your traffic is coming from? Like, are you mainly seeing organic traffic? You mentioned a lot of ads. Are you doing Facebook mm-hmm. advertising or AdWords? What, what, what's going on there? Yeah, the bulk of the traffic is Facebook ads. The business is really built on direct response, paid ads model. So there it is a small amount of organic traffic. And obviously, we send people back with our emails and other things like that. But the bulk of it is paid ads for sure. We've done other ads in the past. So we have templates for adult advertising and native ads and a couple other things that we've got to work. But Facebook ads has just been the cheapest. So we (laughs) stuck with that. That makes sense. Uh, As far as earning types go, you mentioned that your main, you have several different products. One that you actually is your product and the rest are affiliate products. I'm assuming your product that you actually source is making the lion's share of the income or what? What's the breakdown on that? Yeah, it's making the lion's share of the income for sure. There's some months where we'll set, we haven't been, you know, as on top of sending out an affiliate email or something like that, or just haven't done much with it. So we'll send out a big blast to our whole, you know, list and that will get us a good spike in affiliate revenue. But you know, over the last 12 months, it would be the bulk of it would be the internal products. I think it's about 70, 30 or so, maybe more. Interesting. So for your email sequence, is it, just a follow-up where it's selling your main source product, or is there also affiliate links built throughout the sequence? Yeah, there's also affiliate links in the automated sequence. So it's about 10 days, I believe, of going, you know, some content, some help, and then going to our internal product. And then there's still content and a couple affiliate links and also a couple back to us. So it, after the 10 days, we go at some affiliate, some back internal. I think there's about 45 days or so of automated emails going out at the moment. Not, bad, not a bad length of time. Uh, how, how stable are the earnings, would you say? The earnings are as stable as the you know, paid ads are. So as long as you, you know, keep up with the paid ads and everything, then earnings are very stable. So if you, you know, stop ads all of a sudden, you won't see as much of a decline the next month because obviously the recurring revenue and everything. But the month after, you'll start to see the decline. And each you know, consecutive month, if you stopped, you'd see a decline every month. But you could stop paid ads you know, one month, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't lose everything because there's the recurring revenue aspect right. of it. That's very nice. How much content is on the site? Are you doing any kind of content marketing at all, like a blog or something like that? Uh, we're doing no blogging, no real content marketing at all. It's mainly the, the single sales page and... And the email sequences are is our main content. We don't have a, a blog or really any SEO ranking stuff that, that we're doing at the moment. Yeah. So this kind of goes into my next question. Since but you kind of already I think gave it away, gave the answer away. Uh, for since you have a source product, you could, you know, theoretically turn this into also an e commerce site. Do you do anything with e commerce or is it mainly just kind of send the traffic to a lead page, then follow up by a sales letter after they convert? I'm assuming that's the funnel. Uh, yeah, that's that's the main funnel. We have done a more uh, Shopify style page that we we still have run traffic to for the past few months. That just straight sales the you know the products, so people buy it up front at you know a certain quantity and everything, and have a couple other products on there. Still do a little bit of that, but we do more of the to the straight sales page and everything. Do you find that the, I'm assuming the straight sales page must convert much higher than the Shopify store or are the conversions different where it's worthwhile keeping the Shopify store around? Yeah, so the sales page definitely converts better. We just do it for the, if we decided we wanted a little more cash on hand that month, we still are getting an ROI on the straight sale. So we can, you know, get a little more right away back into our pocket. Whereas, you know, if we ramp up ads to, the other page, since it's mainly on trial, we don't get that, you know, for a month out. So we, we keep it around because it still converts, even though the, the lifetime value isn't as much as the, the trial or the other sales page, but just use it for, for different purposes. Or, or we'll use it for, you know, retargeting. If someone's already seen the other sales page, we'll send them back to 
the Shopify site or vice versa. So they've seen it once. They can see it in a different iteration with a little bit of different content on it. Uh, it's cool appealing to different kinds of people. I, li- I like that. Yeah. Uh, as far as opportunities go, if you wanted to, let's just pretend you're going to keep this business, you weren't going to sell it and you're going to continue to grow it. What would be the least risky path you take to grow this business? What would you focus on? Yeah, the, the least risky, if you, if you had the, you know, the money to put into it, it would definitely just be scaling up Facebook ads would be the easiest, you know, without really too much time and without you know, too much effort, it would grow very easily with, with just extra Facebook ads, basically more ad spend. It's in a very open, you know, there's a lot of people in this market, so it's very hard to saturate basically. So that would be probably, I think, the, the number one thing. And then if past that or, you know, playing on that, if you did international expansion, I think would be what I would focus on next. Right now we're all U.S., shipping all U.S. and targeting all U.S. people. But just, you know, siphoning off a little bit of that or sending some product to a, an overseas fulfillment center or using an overseas manufacturer, that would probably be my next step just to open up the market even more. What would you do if you decided to be incredibly risky? Is that is that what you do? Go to the international market, or is there another move that you'd make if you just threw caution to the wind? Yeah, I think well, overseas is I think I mean more risky, obviously, than just scaling the current Facebook ads and everything. But I I wouldn't see it as too risky just because I, we've run it for so long. We know you know we, our ads and our page work at least for this t- type of buyer, and you know in the US so it should work just as well for, you know, UK or any of the English speaking countries and, you know, overseas. But if I was being, I guess, riskier and wanted to put even more time or other people into it, I would probably start trying to really build it out as a an even larger brand itself instead of just focused on more one product. I would probably try and brand it even more so I would get, you know, a couple other products into the into the pipeline, you know. So we're really focusing on one main product that we manufacture but having you know five or six in the same space would be helpful and then being able to build out a you know content site and other things like that i think that would be if i was being riskier i would really try and build it out that way yeah that makes sense more products can definitely add a lot to the bottom line so as far as your facebook ads go you're i'm assuming you're going to be giving away your facebook ad templates to the new buyer you mentioned you'd give away ad designs and everything and I'm assuming you're also going to do some kind of training for them when it comes to Facebook, if they say if they need it, that is. Yeah, we can train them for sure. We Most of our ads are actually outsourced, so we have a VA who does most of our ads for us because the market we're in is so large, we don't really change up the ads too much. We've run very similar ads for you know the past two years, so it wouldn't take too much effort to train, but then we can also transfer, you know, the VA said they're happy to go to the new owner so they can you know do the ads pretty much for you. And what do you think the biggest risk for a business like this is that a buyer should be aware of? Yeah, one of the biggest risks would be one, just making sure a product stays in stock and you know that you could because if you are out of stock and you still have monthly people going in, it's just not good for chargebacks, refunds, all that stuff can really, you know, start to sink it quickly. So staying in stock would be the most important thing. And then just risks in general would be to make sure the Facebook account is staying in good health or that you have the ability to get another account or to be able to stay up with other traffic sources. Just because if the you know the Facebook account went down, then there's not as much traffic going to it and everything. But we haven't had our Facebook account go down and it's you know doing all white hat stuff. So it should be all fine in that department. Excellent. And uh, as far as work required, you mentioned you have a few other businesses that you're running and building. So can you describe the amount of type of work you're doing for this site right now? What are you doing to maintain it? Any kind of weekly or monthly tasks you're doing? Yeah, so for the most part, the on a day-to-day basis, it's really just kind of overviewing or glancing at the CRM to make sure all the you know numbers look right. We're generally doing similar numbers every day, so just making sure nothing all of a sudden goes down. You know, if I see zero, then I know something is really wrong, or the, <laughs> the host is down, or something along those lines. And then just responding to you know any vendor or VA questions. So occasionally our fulfillment provider will ask us about an order or something like that. So on a day-to-day, it's just really those two things. A little bit of time, not much really. Five minutes to check the CRM and depending on the questions, uh, another 30 minutes maybe to, to answer questions, but sometimes vendor questions. So just the CRM is really the daily thing. 
And then weekly, it's really just paying everyone. And, you know, again, more of a overview of the CRM and the ads, make sure they look all right again. And then more on a, on a monthly basis is just checking with chargebacks and making sure, you know, the merchant accounts just are healthy and everything. As far as your CRM is concerned, are you using something like volume, like an affiliate-based kind of tracking system, or do you have something like a more general CRM, or what are you using? Yeah, we have a more general CRM. It's called Limelight. It specializes in the direct response and recurring revenue type businesses, so it you know, makes everything, the, the recurring part of it and having the trial built in and all of that really easy for us. Very cool. Your sales letter and opt-in page isn't hosted on Limelight, though, is it? Or is it just a code that you, Limelight gives you? Yeah, it's just code that uh, we have internally. And then we use Limelight's API to send the orders, basically, to Limelight and send all the data. So for a person that's looking at this business that's coming into it, maybe they're not familiar with the niche. What skills or requirements would you suggest for them to have if they were a serious buyer for this business? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just the the organization of everything. So because everything is pretty much outsourced at this point and we can, you know, teach some of the smaller details that are needed to just know, you know, some of the basics. It's really just kind of being on top of everything, whether it's just managing the third party vendors or the VAs, make sure everything is just stays in line and that the product is, you know, in stock, things like that. I think that's probably the the biggest thing. Everything else can be easily, you know, shown or understood once, you know, one call can be really easily taken care of. I think the ongoing just organization is the biggest thing. That's a pretty nice setup. The more a business can be automated or, you know, maybe not automated to the point where it's passive, right? But you have the machine kind of already built. Mm -hmm. So that's always nice that a new buyer can get in there and just kind of plug in and play with it from there. Yeah. Moving into kind of some additional information, some wrap-up questions here. Would you be willing to commit to a non-compete, say like, hey, look, I'm not going to go start this exact same direct sales and Shopify store right after you buy this for me? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. And uh, how, how much support would you be willing to offer a buyer? You mentioned that you would give some training, but you want, do you want to expand on that at all? Yeah. So, I mean, when uh, talking to you guys previously, I had said, I think one hour calls each week for the first month and then just three months of email or, you know, unlimited email or Skype support. And then we'll, you know, with the first transfer and everything, I'm sure there'll be another walkthrough call. So basically happy to give as much uh, within reason, as much support as, as needed to really get it, move it over and, you know, all the training needed. So however much that takes, but hopefully within reason. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously the best case scenario here for you and for Empire Flippers is someone comes in and just buys it flat out for the list price. But would you be at all open to a split or earn out, say it puts 70% up front and 30% after training or hitting some kind of goal that you guys both agree to? Would you be open to something like that at all? Uh, yeah, I would be open to it. Obviously, you know, Cash would win on uh, <laughs> if multiple people were were giving bids and everything. But with the size, I understand that it's not necessarily the the easiest to finance all all up front. So would be open to it. Would want to also vet out the the buyer, obviously, just to make sure everything was good. We sold a previous site a couple of years ago now, but sold a previous site where we had to earn out, and then they didn't you know want to put in any work into it and kind of let the business just fall apart. So want to, you know, make sure it's a, a buyer who would want to take it over, you know, completely and actually get it to make it work and that we'd actually get the, <laughs> the earn out. Yeah, definitely. For sure, man. That is always a concern on the seller side. Uh, before I move into the, my final question here, Robin, I uh, just want to remind everyone that's listening out here again of the quick summary of the business. This business was built in July 2014, has a monthly revenue of $66,745 with expenses at $42,942 and a net profit of $23,803. And again, that's at the 12 month average. With the sale includes the domain, the files, the site, the Facebook account page with 20,000 plus likes, the Facebook outsourcer if desired that we talked about as well as the trained email support VA on as well as the product inventory, the CRM with Limelight, third-party vendor transfer, all the old prospect and customer data, the email list and accounts with autoresponder sequences, as well as the site slash products, original design files and ad design files. So Robin, my final question for you is, what is your best pitch in 30 seconds or less why someone should purchase this business? 
Yeah, I think the the main points, I'm sure we touched on it short or a little bit earlier, but would be the recurring revenue, I think is the one of the biggest selling points just really helps everything. And then the second would be that how scalable it is just we've only touched the, the US market and you know, still haven't nearly saturated that at all. And with paid ads can scale on a on a dime really. And then the all out or almost all outsource allows you to scale without having to drain any of your time or anything. And then I guess, yeah, the multiple income streams with affiliate plus internal products. And uh, we've done all the hard work in terms of uh, getting it to the point of, you know, the business model that makes sense, that works and the right price points and trial times and everything to to really get it to where it is now and be able to be plug and played. Yeah, man, I, I totally think that's awesome with, with how you built up this business into almost a machine in of itself. I know split testing could be a pretty tedious process, so I can imagine you have a <laughs> lot of fun with those price point campaigns. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so for everyone out there listening to this, if you're watching this on YouTube or Daily Motion or somewhere else, and you want more information, go ahead and click the link below. It will take you to our marketplace listing. But if you're watching this on the actual listing and you want more detailed information about this business, you become a depositor today. It's super easy. All you do is click the button, make a deposit, and you can go ahead and start your due diligence on this business. So, Robin, thank you so much for coming on, man. It was an absolute pleasure. Yep. Good time. <laughs>